it comes to guitar ripping technique, Dave Mustaine is most well known for his use of spider chords, a voicing technique where you play a power chord with the index and ring finger on one string, and then you drop the middle and pinky to the next power chord one string down. He uses this technique to play either minor six, as I just demonstrated, or a tritone interval really quickly, and this occurs several times in the intro to Holy Wars, which I played right there at the beginning. There are plenty of videos breaking down spider chords, some from Dave himself, so I have no intent on taking this on. Instead, I want to break down another one of Dave's lesser known chord voicing techniques, and that's his use of chromatic major thirds, which is essential to the unique sound featured, especially on the Rust in Peace album. While metal is primarily composed in minor keys, the use of major third chords is not out of the ordinary since they occur naturally in the diatonic minor modes. That statement was a background test. If you don't understand what it means, I recommend learning the basics of intervals, chords, and scales before delving deeper. If you do understand that statement, that's about as much music theory as you're going to need to digest the rest of this video. So the hypothesis is this. Dave's use of major chords is distinct because he incorporates them chromatically, substituting them for power chords in a way that adds flair to his riffs by drawing attention to the fact that they don't align with our expectations for diatonic music and often don't belong. One example of this chord voicing technique is in this riff. So the technique of chromatic major thirds, what I'm referring to is in that last repetition of this riff where these chords are played using major thirds in half steps. So in this riff, he's moving between a palm muted open E to a G and F sharp power chord. So if we're to play the full diatonic chord, this song is an E minor, so E is naturally going to be a minor chord, F sharp is going to be a minor chord, and G is going to be a major chord. So during this section he plays the riff three times with power chords, and then on that last run he switches to playing both F sharp and G with the major third interval. So if this was a Swedish Melodeth song, that riff would be played diatonically, which would actually sound like this. That's kind of hard to hear on the lower register strings, so I'm going to shift that whole thing up to the upper register and play it a little bit slower so you can really hear that harmony. This is the diatonic version of the riff. So what Dave plays instead is the chromatic version of the riff. The offending note in particular is the major third of the F sharp, which is not part of the E minor scale. So his riff sounds like this. And it's the appearance of that chromatic major third that subverts our expectation and makes the riff a lot more interesting. On top of just being chromatic, the offending note, that major third, is the A flat, which is the tritone of E. So this is an exceptionally off-putting note, and it really just hones our attention right to it, creating a strong finish for what is the last repetition of a key riff that transitions the intro of the song into the first verse. So he goes from playing power chords three times and then finishes it off with something different. So this is not the first or last time Dave uses these types of major thirds in the song. In fact, in the intro, transitioning into the melodic lead that goes like this. So that's a progression of harmony, starting first with the root note, 
and then going into those chromatic major thirds into power chords and then finally closing out with octaves. So that's a way of using harmonic enhancements in on top of an otherwise repetitive riff to build layers and create what is a really strong transition. So the last riff from Holy Wars I'm going to go over is for the first first. It's an incredibly technical riff and I consider this one of the most fun things you can play on a guitar. <laughs> That riff is filled with chromatic major thirds, except for that last bar, which closes with power chords. The two parts that I really want to analyze are the first bar and the third bar. And I want to start with the third one. So it starts with this. These chords are E minor and D sharp minor. So half steps are always a great way to create an ominous feeling. And that's really important for the song uh, because of this part. Wouldn't it have been great if I actually learned how to play that part for this video? But anyway, back to the point. These two chords in bar three are chromatic minor thirds. This video is about chromatic major thirds. Now those minor thirds play an important role, but to really see what that role is, we need to jump back in time and go to bar one. So this bar is very similar, uh, except instead of an E minor and a D sharp minor, it plays actually the same major chords from before a G major and an F sharp major, just an octave higher. But there is a slight twist. These chords are not exactly what you think they are. Bar one and bar three are actually harmonically paired. Bar three starts on the E minor root, which makes sense the song is in E minor. Functionally, bar one is the same exact thing. What Dave Mustaine has done is broken up the harmony into two different sections, electing to start on the upper register, basically the third and the fifth of the E minor and the D sharp uh, minor chords, and then come back to it using the two root chords, those minor chords, to reinforce this pattern. And that gives you this incredible riff. By breaking up the pieces across separate bars like this, it really just gives a little extra flair that makes that riff so much more interesting. He's kind of playing the same thing, but it's also different. So to summarize, the signature sound on Rust in Peace is Dave's use of chromatic major thirds, especially in areas where they're out of place. Aside from Holy Wars, we have this riff from Tornado of Souls. <laughs> and it just sounds so cool. Now there's a take home point I wanna end this video on with regards to the purpose and utility of music theory. Now if you're a classical composer and you have to write 50 parts for a chamber orchestra or a jazz musician who needs to improvise over hundreds of standards every night, you do need a deep understanding of music theory for compositional purposes. That's not the same case for regular musicians like me who compose popular music. And yes, heavy metal is still technically a form of popular music as defined by song structure. For me, music theory has never been something that I use as a primary means to create new and original ideas. As a writing tool, knowledge of theory can be helpful for making arrangements and perhaps expanding or adding layers to compositions. But when I go to write a riff or song, nothing is more important than the simple fact that my goal is to create something that sounds good to my ear regardless of how it appears on paper or a fretboard. Dave Mustaine is perhaps one of the musicians that exemplifies this the greatest. When he wrote Holy Wars, I guarantee he wasn't sitting there thinking about major thirds or chord substitutions. I know this because you can actually watch a video of him talking about the Holy Wars riffs. Unless it's a power chord, Dave Mustaine really has no idea what he's playing. He actually calls this major interval a regular G, as in the bottom two notes of an open G chord. And his only description of those major and minor chord transitions is that they're evil sounding. And that's perfectly fine. He's created many incredible riffs, especially on Rust in Peace. Uh, to him, there are notes that just sound cool, and really that's the whole point of the songwriting thing, isn't it? In my opinion, the real importance of music theory is that it's the single most powerful tool for promoting effective analysis and discussion of composed music, such as in this video. 
The real reason musicians should learn theory is so that we have a better language to discuss the contents of music. For those of you that don't know the first thing about theory and made it all the way to the end, perhaps because you're a big Megadeth fan, I hope your curiosity and desire to understand the finer details discussed here inspires you to get started. And I'm talking especially to you, Dave. It's never too late.